All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tales <laughs> from the Lounge, Cigar Company Spotlight. I'm Ron. This is Chris. And we are live. Now, let's see who is actually on, and let me get a... Mike. Actually, I'm going to do this all over again. I'm week gonna, three. Huh? This, this is the third week I've screwed this up. Uh, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember how, how many times uh, Brandon and uh, Dave messed up, you know, Saturday at the shop. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. This is Ron from Tales from the Lounge. This is Cigar Company Spotlight. I'm Ron. I'm Chris. And he always gets this part right. <laughs> That's why I got him. Oh, so let me get things pulled up here for us. We can see what's kind of going on. And then you got to pull out our cigars because we got to get our cigars started. Oh, God. Okay. So this week we are doing Drew Estates. Man. And to be honest, I think we bit off more than we could chew. I was, gonna, I was just getting ready to say that exact same thing. You know I was what? like, I'll take these off. Ugh. It definitely was uh, a big undertaking, especially since I was out of town this weekend and enjoying the Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend. And I tried to enjoy it as much as I could as well. Uh, but uh, that was a daunting task for one week. It was. And you'll, you'll understand why once we get into uh, Drew Estate. And and talk about uh, the all the stuff they have. All yeah, and that's and that's a good way of putting it. Uh, all the stuff they have, it's just crazy. Oh, so let me get my cheat notes out here. Oh, see, he's got cheat notes on his computer, and I've got little index. He's got cards. cards. Oh, and I'm also going to go ahead and pull up. Uh, More information. So while he's pulling stuff up, uh, our drink of choice tonight to be paired with our cigars is the Ardbeg 10-Year uh, Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, which is a peaty uh, whiskey if, uh, or scotch if anyone is familiar or not familiar with it. So we're going to go with that today. I've already poured us uh, some nice healthy pours to get started. So Awesome, awesome. And we are going to do something different that neither one of us have done before and we're going to start off with a flavored cigar and i got us now remember drew estate that's drew the estate. company we are featuring and i got us each an acid an acid so this is the blonde maduro yes yes the blonde the maduro. i at least maduro. wanted to do something uh uh i didn't want to do something super light for us this is going to be a uh, quick smoke Thank God. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is not a torture. Now, supposedly you can just twist the uh, ears, uh, the little tail on the end. Well, thanks for warning me before I cut it. That's all right. I, no, I think I did that on purpose. I think each of us needs to do a di little different style and see how we like see, it. See how we like it. I'm gonna well, see how the draw is. I am interested in how these are because the. Uh, person I went, a uh, shout out to Amanda out there in uh, Kentucky that I went to visit um, this past weekend. She's been smoking cigars and uh, are trying to smoke cigars and she likes them a little bit more on the sweeter side. So the infused or what some people call a little bit more flavored cigar. So I, I tried to take some really good cigars to her and ease her into some nice premium cigars. But I'm interested to see if this would be a potential blend that she might like. So uh, I'm going to take a quick little. What are you getting out of that? Like uh, what's pine? The Vicks vapor rub. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. Vicks vapor rub, a pine. A piney, yeah. A piney, pine. a piney smell. I would not think I would get that out of a Maduro, but. Ah, uh, I wouldn't either, but. Blondie. Weird things have happened. But yeah, so, all right, I'm going to light this thing. All right, let's light it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. You know what movie that's from? Oh, now, I will say right off the bat, um, it does, the tip is sweet, and I have to look at my acid note. There are a couple of their cigars that 
they specifically sweeten the tips. I could say already that no matter what else this is, this would probably be uh, one that Amanda would like. So, my God, sweet. I already took my label off because it's so small. I don't want to burn the. Uh, I it's do. Sweet. It's sweet like a a cough medicine. Sweet. Uh, I don't get a cough medicine, but I, I mean. An artificial sweetener type do not sweetener. Do not retro this thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> do not retro. Of course, I did try to do kind of a full retro, and that was that was kind of harsh. Even though it's sweet, it is a Maduro. But it does have a sweetness. I'm not getting a call. I mean, it's a... For me... Uh, there I am, hitting my mic again. I'm... And we talked about this before we started the show. Um, I'm more of a purist, so I don't really enjoy a lot of infused or flavored cigars. Now, right. Drew Estate will not call it flavored. It's infused, and they have a proprietary method of how they infuse their cigars with whatever flavors they they use. But which is which is a which is a guarded secret, evidently. I mean, like it is. the Coke formula, but. I will say it's not as sweet once I've, you know, gotten past a little bit, the first eighth of an inch or whatever. It's okay. It's not. Again, it's not my wheelhouse, <laughs> but it's not the worst thing I've had. I'll put it that way. It's not the worst thing you've had in your mouth. <laughs> no. All right. Enough about the cigar. We'll make our way we'll, through that we'll make our way through that okay we're here, we're here to talk about drew estate let's talk about drew estates and let's start off with a little bit of history they they started out about 1989 uh with jonathan drew and uh uh marvin samuel uh they're out of brooklyn new york they were originally from out of brooklyn new york they had a kiosk in Dumbo, New York. Now, I not necessarily about Drew Estate, but I was like, Dumbo, New York, what's that? And so I had to look it up because right. I'm not from New York. Now, I've visited there many times, but that stands for Down Under <laughs> Manhattan Bridge Overpass. Ah, I thought it was a Disney reference. So that's that's <laughs> that's the area or district between the Manhattan and Brooklyn bridges down down underneath the overpass. So okay, okay. That's what that stands for, um, which I thought was oh, that's a nice, interesting little tidbit. Uh, and if you weren't from New York or from that Manhattan area or Brooklyn, you would definitely uh, call yourself out when someone said, "Oh yeah, it's over in the Dumbo area," and you go, "The what? Yeah, Disney." then they would know that you were definitely not a local. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely a tourist. <laughs> definitely right. a tourist. Uh, now, I'm going to say something probably a little controversial here. Uh-oh. Uh, going through their website and going through their history and stuff, I got a feeling of self-promotion. I mean, they, they really talk themselves up a lot. Was uh -huh. that an impression you got, or was it just me being a dick? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I understand where you come from in that. Uh, if I had read it in an article, that would have been different. I think the reason it came across that way, and this is me putting my analytical lens on it, is, and probably me being a little bit of giving benefit of the doubt, is because they have so many different brands under them that if it was just three or four brands that you read about, it probably wouldn't have come across that way. Well, it wasn't just that. It was it was like the, you know, the entire first line was, you know, it's a story of, uh, and I'm trying to remember how they put it. It was a, a failure and restart and blah, 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 and a can-do attitude and, and uh, that type of thing. Well, and, you know, and, it, uh, was, it was a, a hard start for them. I mean, they, they had some, some things they had to overcome. So, yeah, I think it was just you being a dick. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> as long as we got that clear and my wife will agree wholeheartedly, I'm a dick. All right. So, uh, that out of the way. But Jonathan moved to Nicaragua in 1989. I'm uh, 98. 98, yeah. 98. Uh, 
with the hopes of starting. Well, first let's 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 they were they lived in the Dumbo area. Right. They had a kiosk at the World Trade Center. Right. North Tower. Right. And it was a 16 square foot little kiosk that you'd find in the mall. Right. And they were just selling all different kinds of brands, and they were wanting. Uh, Jonathan Drew was wanting to start his own, make his own cigar and start his own brand. Something that he'd wanted to do. Now, do you know what got him interested in that? No. So, these two guys were frat brothers, but um, he actually interned for uh, one of the senators or whatever from New York and worked on his campaign. And during that campaign, he smoked his first cigar, which was a Part of good series D number four. Not a bad which is, smoke. Yeah. Which when you get start. started out on the right foot, I can see why you definitely would want to jump in and start to do it. But that's what got him into it. Um, and bought that kiosk and wanted to get involved in it. Um, and then uh, Marvin Samuel got in on it. Then he went to Nicaragua, right? Right. So Samuel stayed behind. Yep. Ran and the kiosk. Ran the kiosk. Uh, he was in Nicaragua for a year. What do they call him? They called him... The crazy uh, gringo. That crazy gringo, because at that time, he was the only white guy down there. and trying didn't, to, didn't even speak Spanish. Didn't even speak Spanish. Slept on a little burned-out mattress above the factory floor, this factory that he found that he was working in, warehouse thing. Um, yeah, so... And, you know, they begged, borrowed, and stole from family members and... Relatives and friends and even some, uh, I think it even says in the history, some not-so-savory characters that they knew. Lone sharks, I'm sure. I'm sure somewhere there in uh, New York City uh, to, you know, get That may be why Jonathan walks with a limp. (laughs) (laughs) To get the seed money that they needed. I mean, they didn't have, you know, the funding and everything that they needed, so... um, Well, you do have to admire their their ambition. Oh, yeah. and another thing is they boast that they were sh- shooting for a rebirth of the cigar culture. And uh, they have certainly produced enough stuff to at least... Uh, uh, Birth out a new nation. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, so they're working, trying to get stuff together. What's the first cigar they make? The La Vieja Habana. Which is for stands for the old uh, uh, Havana. They were the old Cuban, right? Um, Why did that one get st- uh, stopped production? Actually, it was going really good. They were starting to get good reviews on it, but then Hurricane Mitch was it Mitch? Hurricane Mitch. That's Mitch right. Mitch came through Nicaragua, and they had to stop production on it. Wiped so, out the crop. Yeah, I mean. wiped everything out. They were just getting started and kind of getting into a groove, and then everything got put on hold. And that was in 2001. Mitch comes through, jacks up all their plans. Yeah. Uh, they start over again, and uh, that is uh, when uh, they came across a... Uh, am, am I understanding he was a graffiti artist? Yes. Uh, Scott Acid Chester. Yep. And now we know why there is a Chester line of cigars. Or acid uh, an line. acid line of cigars. Yep. Uh, they started uh, producing the acids, uh, doing a flavored. Uh, infused. Infused. You will not find the word flavored anywhere on their website, promotional materials. It's all infused. Infused. And that is, again, like we mentioned earlier, a proprietary uh, secret that they guard very closely. Yeah, in fact, we were talking to a gentleman earlier today that said he had had a tour of the Drew Estates uh, facility, and they will not let you go in and see any of the production of the acid material right. at all. Uh, and in fact, they said, you can ask lots of questions. We will probably won't answer most of them. <laughs> right. And uh, interesting thing about that guy, his name was Ron as well. His, his name was Ron. He actually grew up three streets over from Marvin Samuel. Really? Yeah. Well, so. now he's in Texas. We welcome it, Ron, to Texas, and hopefully he'll catch this show at some point <laughs> and uh, uh, figure out that we were talking bad about him on the... Uh, oh, no, no. We were talking good yeah. about him on the, the show. Yeah. So, you know, something that for this one, we're really going to have to focus on the people and not really get into the cigars like we have on our other two because I'll see if I can count them up. 
There's one, There's like two, 15 lines. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen lines, and under those seventeen brands. There's even different things under those brands. So, and, and on top of that, every last one of them has a sizing chart about yay long. Yeah. Uh, on the page, at least seven to eight different sizes per line. Uh, so it would, if we were here for three and a half hours talking about <laughs> Drew Estate, we might be able to cover it all. But instead, we're going to hit the highlights. And I don't know about you, but I'm just officially done with the acid. I'm gonna. I. I don't hate it. It's not my favorite, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna smoke it. I'm you don't have here. to. Your palate's different. What are you gonna move on to though? Uh, so, I got us. I got us two real sticks. All right. So wait. So we talked about the acid. The acid actually has 30 different types in its line. So if you want to know all the different types, go to their website and look it up. I'm not gonna list all of them, but the one that we mentioned earlier, the very first one, the <sighs> La Vieja Habana. Some interesting facts about this one that I just want to hit real quick. Okay. The hurricane stopped it. Yep. But this is made from a uh, leftover quality leaf from their premium productions, like the uh, uh, the Liga and some of those that we're going to talk about. Right. Um, and they have three different kind of types under under the the la vieja and uh one has earthy with some uh hints of spice uh, the maduro is chocolate and coffee with some slight sweet taste to it that they say is great with a steak dinner and then the other one is a connecticut shade which has a little bit of coffee flavor and is a little bit nutty uh, finish to it and is a great morning stick with your uh coffee so that's the that's the very first one they produced, um, and it, it once they got through that period and got the acids and got through that, they went back to that one and got that done. But um, and the acids, you'll uh, uh, not be surprised. They're actually about thirty percent of their overall sales. So you figure they have seventeen different lines uh, and and you know seven, eight, ten different sizes per line. Uh, plus everything that the acid does. I mean, uh, they're, uh, they do a lot of acid business compared to, to, to the rest of the stuff. Uh, Again, don't even do the retro on this. No. I don't like no. the retro on these. Now, it's the Maduro, so, but... Well, I got us the uh, Undercrown. Oh, I can smoke two cigars at once. I know you can. I've seen you do it. Undercrown Maduro. All yes. Right. So this is another one of theirs. And what size would you guess that is? What's that, a 58? No. Probably about a 54, 54. 52. Um, again, I'm not giving out all the sizes because they have all kinds of uh, craziness. But the should, under be the, should be the Robusto. But this is the Undercrown. Now, is this, this is the Maduro. So they have eight different sizes under the Maduro. Yep. Um, they also have a shade and a sun grown. And right. I think we this explained is that. Sun grown. Right. We haven't explained that. Last uh, week. Uh, we did. We we Last did. Week, we, we, did explain, it, we did explain what sun grown is. Sun grown means that they uh, it was grown in the sun, and su uh, shade means that it, they uh, grew it under a shaded area, uh, and they will uh, put camouflage slash tarps over the the uh the the gardens in order to protect them from the sun now what impact does that have on the tobacco let's explain why there's a difference uh in in the tobacco uh why would you do shade versus sun well one if the if it's getting too much sun and you're burning your plants uh you'll want to do it to protect the uh the the crop itself and the less sun it gets the slower it grows plus the ultraviolet rays and everything change the uh, the flavoring and the texture of the of the uh, uh, leaves. Right. And uh, shade grown will be a tenderer plant compared to sun grown. Right. And sun grown will be a darker taste, bolder. Yep. Right. Where the shade will be a little bit milder. 
Yep. So that's, for those of you who were curious why there would be a difference, there you go. Um, all right, so under crown. Now, I always try to do research on different symbols and colors, and we've talked about that in the last two company spotlights. There were too many for me to search, but I did find a little bit of information on this character here. The Griffin. On the Griffin, if you want to call it that. The one thing I found out, I wasn't sure if it was true, they called it the Bird of Paradise. Okay. Um, and if you notice on the bottom of it here, it is an... If you turn it upside down, it's a crown, right? Right. So the under crown, the under crown is there. So, and I was just kind of curious if it was under crown because they used some of the lower leaves from the top of the plant versus leaves nearer the top. I don't know. I just trying to read into some of this potential symbolism, but there was too much info. We will have to have at least two or three more just for uh, Drew Estates in order to. But here's the, the other thing on Drew Estates, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. If you look on the back of the label, you can see the Drew Estate um, logo, which looks like a bridge. And if you didn't- It should be the Brooklyn Bridge. It is the Brooklyn Bridge. And so now you know where they grew up from, you know, where they pulled that from and where they got it, the significance it has to their overall story. Now, challenge for you guys, one of the things that was mentioned in the documentation that we were reading was that Drew and uh, uh, Marvin Marvin came from a fa from families that had tobacco backgrounds, but I could not find who their dads were or who what that what that lineage or what that tie right. was. Uh, if you know, let us know because uh, we're curious. Uh, we like that kind of crap. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, that I saw was that they were frat brothers. And so I thought, oh, a little interesting tidbit. What frat were they in? And I, I look. Now, granted, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, and I didn't use the whole week for research. I used, like, half a day, and I couldn't find it. So I'm just curious. What, what frat? And did they finish did they get kicked out of there or what they look like so, they got kicked out but who knows who knows they might both have doctorates you never can tell yeah um all right so so now we've moved on to the undercrown and we've covered three of the 17 lines that they have a little bit more on their history um they started that 16 square foot in the kiosk and a oh, size their first plant their first plant the one that they opened opened their new one the the first one the first big one they opened oh the La Grand Fabrica that was the Drew Estate that they had in uh, July of two thousand seven right and how big was that um I, I don't remember ninety six thousand square feet oh no no that was oh yeah that's yep. the the one they they opened yeah yeah ninety six thousand was they the opened. largest cigar factory in Nicaragua at the time and one of the five largest premium cigar factories in the world in the world now and that's that was, so that was about 10 years after i they was got about started. to say yeah um, that's not too shabby for nine years yeah so that's that was uh amazing and then the other thing before that happened they uh as they were growing they had a name that people in the scar industry would might uh recognize is in 2004 um they moved they left uh new york and headquartered down in miami miami yep and they brought on uh steve saka to be the president to kind of keep them in line yep um and make their processes a little bit more efficient and well yeah, you gave jonathan and uh uh, time to be creative. Marvin, time to play. Time to play and be creative. Uh, uh, and you know, and that was one of the interesting things you, uh, that I did read about them was part of the reason why they had so many uh, different lines where they were constantly experimenting and coming up with different blends and and instead of having a mindset of and we have to I do could, it this one uh, way. Well, yeah. no, uh, from what I. Uh, from what I read into it, and this again, this may be just me uh, uh, speculating, but instead of getting to know the leaves and understanding the uh, all of the crop and everything and going, you know what, I think this would really be good with this one, 
because they know the leaves so well, they just started throwing things together and seeing what they could come up with. Uh, it was uh, trial by fire. <laughs> trial by uh, trial by fire. Throw as much on the wall and see what sticks. Exactly. You know, we, we say that, and you talked a little bit about the self-promotion on their website, and we talked a little bit about this before the show, too. I was, as many brands that they've created, it did, I was like, man, you got so much going on, how can you, how can you really be an expert in anything? I mean, it's yeah. nice to be a jack-of-all-trades, but what suffers when you do that? Granted... You know their their um, undercrown line. I've smoked them before. They're they're good cigars, but some of the other cigars that I smoke because they don't have as many brands or they're not they don't have their fingers in eighteen different things. Right. If you were to say, do you want an undercrown or do you want this? I would probably take the other one. Right. You know. Um, not to say well, it's a and, bad cigar. Uh, no. And you know another thing that I that uh is definitely different. Between Crux and uh, Drew Estate, Batoro and Drew Estates, is there's a lot more aging going on with Patoro and yeah. Crux compared to uh, two years. Here. Yeah, two years. I mean, they, they, they boast, oh, we, we let it age for 18 months and blah. And I'm like, 18 months? <laughs> Hell, that wouldn't even get you started for a Patoro right. at all. I mean, uh, but anyway, we're we're not here to judge. We're just here to, aren't we? No, nah, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> so, so we talked a little bit about their history. You know, one of the things that I liked about reading about them, um, uh, particularly the acid, it's one of those things that you know when they first brought it out and tried to sell it, people were like, "You guys are crazy. This is this isn't going to work. It's not going to sell." Um, and then, you know, like we said, it, be, it became one of the more most popular brands, especially in their line, but just popular brands, brand and cigars anyway. Um, so let's, uh, we're not going to, uh, I'm trying to think the best way to do this. Uh, I'm going to. So we did the Undercrown. Yep. Let's let's move on to another one. Which one do you want to go to next? Let's Wait, do let's this. see if do we have any uh, questions yet or No, we don't have any questions. Nobody's watching this shit, man. There might be <laughs> one or two. I sent some notices out. We'll okay, see. okay. So here's what we want to do. I'm going to call that a line. Okay. And then we'll hit the highlights. Okay. Make it quick and then we'll move to the next one. All right. Okay? And I'm going to go straight down this list here. Okay, and good, because that's the order that I that did. That is probably did the order you did them in, and we, that's what I looked at. All right. Okay, and we were talking about the uh, Undercrown right now, Sun Grown. Yep. Uh, not a bad cut. I'm enjoying this Maduro, though I am trying to, still trying to get that sweetness out of my mouth. Well, and I'm going back and, and forth. And you're going back and, and forth. I could, I, your eyes are going to be swimming before too much longer. Well, and now I let this one go out. I don't know if I want to try and relight it, but you know what? You're a glutton for punishment. I'm... I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give it a fair shake. I feel try. like I've wasted 10 bucks. <laughs> Is that how much you paid for these? Uh, it was like $6 a piece. All right. All right. So, Bassett, not bad, but not my wheelhouse. Right. I can see why some people would like it, especially maybe beginners or someone who like a little bit of infusion or flavor to their cigars. If I was a wussy, I'd like it. All right. <laughs> the ladies might like it. I don't know who. We'll, we'll see. Like I said, the wussies. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Undercrown. Undercrown. Well, what are you liking about the Undercrown so far? Mm. It's a stable smoke. It's a decent smoke. It's, and it's, 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 got and a, it's an expectable smoke. Yeah. It's, it's got a nice burn line. It's an easy draw. You know, the Maduro's got a good flavor to it's it. It's a good flavor on it. Um, it's... it's um, yeah, I mean, again, this isn't one that I smoke all the time, but I could easily smoke it. It's a decently priced cigar, so. Exactly. Um, I have had worse. Yeah, okay. definitely. The Undercrown Shade Cigars. So that is the. Um, that's a white label. I don't have a white label. That's all right. So, that, but it's a white label of the one that we just showed you for the blue. Yeah. 
You've got some. I've got some. I'm gonna pull mine out so I don't forget. All right. I'm gonna open this box. Well, when we get oh oh oh, I, I do want to show off because I uh, I did pick up something you didn't, and I did it because I just thought it was kind of kind of cool. All right. Here is a <laughs> flying monkey. That's a fly flying pig. Flying pig. Here is the flying pig version of the Maduro that we're smoking. That's going to be fun to smoke. And if you think that's a weird shape for a cigar, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, What's highlights that? of the uh, shade grown. Uh, they actually have a San Andreas wrapper on them. They do not have they Nicaraguan. Do. Right. Uh, uh, they're a medium body. Uh, they're supposedly ultra smooth. Uh, and I thought I had something else on that. Uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper atop a Sumatran binder. Dominican Creole 98. Uh, Nicaraguan Crow Hole long filler. Supposedly. Yep. Uh, let's see. Okay. And we've talked about the uh, Underground Maduro that we're doing here, which brings us to the uh, Liga Privada. What does Liga Privada mean? Private blend. Private so blend. These were the cigars that they used to roll and smoke themselves. They're in the factory and everything, and they were smoking so many of them that they, <laughs> you know, liked it. They almost had to kind of cut back on production of them. But what no, 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 they didn't. What happened was. Is they went in and said, "Listen, guys, I know you love the Ligas, yeah, and I know that, but but we're trying to sell these things. Y'all got to quit smoking them up here in the shop." <laughs> and so instead of doing I, that, yeah. they came out with their own custom blend, yeah, which became the number nine. Right. Now the interesting thing about these are there's only four pairs of what do we call them? Torcedores. Yes, torcedores. Um, that which is which is which means what? Uh, twisters. Uh, but also, uh, I found another definition. Oh yeah. Uh, where did I find it? Did, did, did. Twisters are what we're commonly referred to as rollers. Right, and it was uh, it was still had to do with rollers. It was uh, artist artisans. Anyway, oh, I'll, I'll, so there's I'll four pairs it. of them, and each pair is only allowed to roll 250, 250 cigars a, a day. A day. Right, because again, this is their private blend. Uh, this is, you know, so they've got the number nine, they've got the T52, they've got the Unico series, they've got the Anniversary, and then they have the H99. Um, so very limited runs, very limited sizes. Uh, and each of the sizes and of those, the blends are um, Oh, different. and I was wrong. I was wrong. It was the Undercrown Maduro that they were asked to stop rolling, or stop smoking up. Uh, and Torcedores is skilled rollers. Mm, skilled rollers, yeah. But uh, I've, I've, had, I've had the Ligas, and they're, they're good. I've had the number nine. I've had the T52. Um, I haven't. I don't know if I've had any of the Unico because they have so many different sizes in each of those different right ones that it, it's hard to follow. And uh, uh, the number nine came out when they were trying to develop new product and actually came up with well over 50 different blends in the process trying to find a perfect daily smoke. Yeah. So... Definite dedication to the craft, or let's throw fake some it till stuff, you make it. Fake it till you make it, or let's throw something on the wall and see what <laughs> sticks, right? Uh, and that's kind of the theme that you know we got going through. There's just so many different brands. I mean, I don't, I don't hate. You got to say one thing for them. They're either going to fake it till they make it, or their whole whole keep thing experimenting is, until you find something. Unique. No, diversify, 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 yeah, exactly. diversify. I mean. Uh, so they've got and make their, it up in volume. Yeah. What you don't make in quality, you make up in volume. True. All right, so that's the Liga series. And again, the T52 you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, 
the plantation you know, uh that one's got a binder that's plantation grown brazilian uh matrafina and again there's plenty of information on each one of these on their website so we're not going to like belabor a lot of that for no, these guys and in fact uh and and one thing i will say they've got a very thorough website and they've got videos for just about every la last one of the lines that talks to somebody about the line uh, and those were pretty uh, interesting. Uh, if you get a chance, check them out. I mean, just for your own uh, own sake. Right. Now we're down to... Uh, We've gone through all of those, the H99. I mean, unless Liga, you want to talk about a little bit about their blends, but... I, Liga Pravada. Uh, the Unico, the Unico series, series. The 11 10 different year sizes. anniversary. Yeah. The H99. So now we get to the FSGs. FSGs. What does FSG stand for? Can I say that on the air? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that stands for Florida Sun Grown Cigars. That's right. Uh, so those were kind of interesting. Uh, cigar. They started making that blend or working on it in 2011, but didn't uh, release it until... 2016. 16. So they worked on that for five years, trying to perfect that blend. And I think they had they have got six different types of the Florida Sun Grown. What makes it different from the others? What kind of sets it apart from like the Ligas or whatever? It's got a unique cap on it. That's right. Uh, and uh, the binder is a Habano uh, seed tobacco, Honduras, uh, Honduras, and. Uh, uh, and a Brazilian wrapper. How you figure that, I don't know. Yep. That's the FSG. Then we go to the Nica Rustica. Which uh, has a unique symbol on it or a character, which is called El Brujito. Looks like a rabbit. Uh, all right, you need to get your glasses checked. Which actually translates to the witch doctor or the shaman. Ah. And uh, it's a process that's been going on for over 6,000 years ago. This uh, smoking uh, for ceremonial and um, medicinal rituals. And so that's Which what is deep in the history of Cuban cigars. Cuban cigars, and Nicaragua. That you was know. that was part of the reason the 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 uh, natives of Cuba were smoking the tobacco leaves was to ward off evil spirits and that type of thing. Well, and that's that's what that's where this uh, rustico came from, and the El Brujito uh, that's on the label of that one and sorry i don't have one uh to show you but that's what that's there to kind of symbolize and call out for the uh, nicaraguan people going back to that that rich heritage from six thousand years ago and and doing that smoke uh for those uh rituals that they uh participate in so so there you go i got a little bit of symbolism in some of these cigars but i couldn't get all of them no i understand completely we'd be here all week Oh, now this one was fun. The next one's kind of fun. The Muat. The Muat. Run with it. Run with it. Run with it. My Uzi weighs a ton is what <laughs> Muat stands for. <laughs> right? now. So Where th is Adrian when we need him? Right? Um, so this one's an interesting one, and I will spend a little bit more time on this one. So this is uh, the brainchild of actually uh, from consumers. It came from a consumer uh, blending and rolling session that they did in conjunction with uh, Hoya de Nicaragua uh, down there in Nicaragua. Uh, and after a couple of years of blending and trying some, uh, Jonathan Drew found one that he felt like, you know, that's the one that matches up. But this came from, when you go down there, you can do tours and they do tours on their, their factory floor. Hoya de Nicaragua does the same thing. Uh, and this started in 2010 they still do it today as we found out from ron uh that we saw at the lounge earlier today he was talking about his tour 
Um, you go in and they do this consumer blending. They let you blend and roll your own cigars and kind of do some experimenting yourself. But this Mawat came from that um, and is uh, uh, a, a pretty interesting blend. It came, the sizes though are 6x60 and a 7x70. A so set, I was. I told you last week. Ring gauge is I told you last week. Thing. I was gonna. I was gonna track down a seventy. So that may be what I have to uh, to track down is the Mawat seven by seventy. Yeah. And it will probably weigh a ton. And but they do have a smaller version of it too, called the Nightcrawler. I have a lot of weird names for their cigar sizes. Yeah, that was also interesting. And I've got some of those when we get into some of the even more interesting ones. But the Mawat story, considering that it was a consumer blending session, you know, that was kind of neat, you know, and a little unique to to them. Now let's hit the genuine Kentucky Fried Cured Mawat. So they've got, so the Kentucky uh, Fired or K- Kentucky Fire Cured line is a line that I was also very interested in. Because I haven't had any of these, but reading about it and reading through it really piqued my interest, and I wanted to try it. And here's why. Because they have just the Fire Cured, they have the Fire Cured Swamp, and then they have the Fire Cured Sweets. So they've got a couple of different lines within the Kentucky Fire Cured. But what makes Fire Cured different than all other cigars when they harvest the, the tobacco and hang it up in the, in the barns to dry? Right. Typically, it's just air dried. Right. But Kentucky Fire Cured, they hang them up in the barns, and then they light some fires, and they close up the barn and let that smoke, the smoke and fire dry up the leaves, and they smoke it as long as they need to until they get the right brownness that they want out of those tobacco leaves. Then what they do, and this happens up in Kentucky, Hoppinsville, Kentucky, they take those down, send it down to St. James Parish uh, and put those in uh, barrels down there, old used bourbon barrels. Bourbon barrels, yep. 53 gallon barrels and they pack in about 500 pounds of tobacco in there and then they seal it up nice and tight for a whole year, only opening it three times. To rotate. To rotate the tobacco, right? To make, put the stuff that's on the bottom to the top, stuff in the middle of the bottom and top to the middle and then you know, and why times. would you do that well you got to make sure you get a good consistency and evenness throughout the whole thing because the stuff on the bottom is so compacted more than the stuff on top plus the fermentation process right builds up a lot of heat and you've got to rotate that uh, uh that those leaves and get some air in there to stop the uh uh the temperature Cause rise because it'll burst into flames it burst into flames yeah or at least smolder very good till yeah. your uh, and bourbon ruin barrel all, sets on fire. And, right, and ruin all your tobacco. <laughs> so so those are... Now, some of the names on this. So on Just the Kentucky Cured, uh, Just a Friend, the Fat Molly, and the Ham Hock. Those are a couple of names. We're talking about ca- weird names. Kentucky Fried uh, KFCC fr- Flying Pig. They've got the Flying Pig. Now, under the Cured Swamp, they have the swamp thing. They've got the swamp rat. No, nope, no, nope. they do not have a swamp thing. They have a swamp thing. Thing. It's got to be a so, thing. Thing. <laughs> if Kayla was here, she'd get me straight. Or That's I'm, right. Or Amanda, she's got a nice twang. She she can throw that that thing. Uh, out a little there. swamp thing. All right, and then the cured sweets, which I believe these would be the ones that would fall into my friend Amanda's wheelhouse. They have an actual sweetened tip. And I love the flavor profile on these. Bacon, maple, bourbon, and barbecue. That just sounds amazing. Damn it, I want to have to try so that for, shit. So for an infused one or whatever, or if you want to call it a flavored one, that well, one yeah, sounds no, amazing. I was fixing to say, if, 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 you're, if part of the process of drying that is done with smoke, I'm going to be a little biased. I'm done with the acid. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh Smoke infusion, I, I could probably get behind that. Yeah, but w- it's interesting. They actually talk about that they actually do a a sweetened tip, you know, on the cigar. Uh, and I would imagine that the other thing that, not necessarily on the website, but I did find out from Ron when they went through and talked about the Kentucky Fire Cured, 
is that when you take the label off, you can see that the fire cured tobacco wrapper is only about half of the cigar. The other half is un, unfire cured. And the reason behind that is, is if they did the full wrapper and fire cured tobacco, it would be way too heavy and smoky and overpowering in the smokiness of it. So by and doing for that you, mix. Uh, and for you bronies, they have a Kentucky Fried Cured Sweet Ponies. Sweet Ponies, they have a sweet Just a Friend and they have a sweet Fat Molly. So, you know, if you're a brony, <laughs> that might be the My Little Pony version for you. But that one did, that's probably the one that I really want to try and find. It's not one we don't carry in the lounge. No. Um, but I'd ha- I'm going to have to find one of those and try one of those. I'm kind of interested. Yeah, that, that and 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 I, let me let, I pause here. One, two, three, four, five. And while I'm six, not eight, a eight, nine, infusion or flavored nine, cigar person, I have said look at all their lines. They're very successful, so I've got to at least try it for myself. So that's why I tried the acid. Seventeen different sizes. Fire cured for yep. the fire cures. Yep. So those are those are, um, yeah. That's the fire cured. I, I really uh, that one really piqued my curiosity now we get into something we're a little more familiar with yes now before we get here let's go jump back a little bit to their history and okay talk about in 2010 um drew was looking for or jonathan drew was looking for a blender to to join join the team and who did he find willie, willie herrera. herrera yep and so he flew willie herrera down to S- their Esteli factory and he was down there uh, for a couple months, and he worked on several uh, for two days straight, and came up with three different blends. Of those three different blends, two of them turned into current brands. One of those being uh, the Herrera Esteli, yep, the one that we're getting ready to talk about, and the other one, the Pappy Van Winkle Tradition. Which we don't, I don't have, but that's uh, also um, another interesting uh, one that we'll get to. But so that was, and so in 2011, he came on, became one of the, uh, the blenders there. And then in 2014, he became the official master blender of Drew Estates. Now, I'm going to jump in here because, and I saved this special for you. All right. We know how Industrial Cigar is about picking their lines. Very, very picky. They're very, very picky. So I asked Dave, what was it about, after reading the history and about Jonathan and Marvin and that type of thing, why did you decide to carry Drew Estates? Because it really doesn't, doesn't sound like their wheelhouse of, of character. Uh, Some of their stuff doesn't. So the response was, one, the brand, and Willie and Pedro. That was it. He said, if it hadn't been for Willie and Pedro, we wouldn't carry the line. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why one of the major lines they carry, they do carry the underground stuff, but they carry the Herrera Esteli. And you got one of the big ones, and I brought one of the smaller ones from the Herrera Esteli. And the blue band. Unfortunately, my lighting sucks. Uh, that's all right. I'll fix that next time. They can check it out on the website. That's right. Uh, and we have smoked quite a few of those. Uh, yes. So this personally. is this is one of the Drew Estate ones that I smoke a lot of. Yep. The Herrera Esteli, whether it's this one or the um, Herrera Esteli, the red and white band, or the green band, or um, the black band. The black band. Um. But so they, so yeah, he's got four of these. Um, the Habano, the Norteño, the Brazilian Maduro, and then the Miami. Now, the Miami one, which is the black label, right? Yes. What I, what I saw that was interesting that left me with a little bit more questions was those, the Herrera Esteli Miamis are rolled by only level nine torcedores. Right. And so... I was like, level nine? Well, how many levels are there to Torcedores? You know, does it Well if there's ten, that's pretty impressive. If yeah. there's a hundred, it's not that big a deal. But all I could find 
when I was looking uh, and doing my research was whenever people were doing special events, their biggest tagline was only done by the best level nine rollers, only the best level nine. So, so it's got to be one to ten. I think it's one to ten or maybe one to nine. One might, or nine might be the best roller until you become a grandmaster or a master blender or i don't know you know kung that, that, fu ninja right yeah <laughs> a, kung, um, a kung fu ninja roller yeah so if anyone does happen to know uh how many levels and that's one of the things i'm going to ask and those like rollers the, have their own special effects as they roll <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing too is for that specific cigar um no it's not that one it's it's the ligas the ligas the all those special real special limited edition ones right those at drew estates are done in their own private rooms and are the only rooms where that are air conditioned well and you know and that's and that is one thing that that i will mention about the uh drew estates and jonathan and them they Unlike a lot of cigar companies, they evidently take really good care of their rollers and their, uh, their blenders people, the and community. their people, the community. And, they have given a lot back. And they have given a lot back. Uh, but this was... And so there is that quality that I do admire them yeah. for. And so the, the inspiration behind the Herrera Esteli is that authentic Cuban quality that uh, Willie Herrera wanted to bring. Uh, and Which we're glad he did. Which we're glad he did. And, you know, his partnership there, uh, since he's been at Drew Estate, you know, they allowed him to let some of his creativity come out. And they're, they're probably my, my favorite cigar in the uh, Drew Estate portfolio. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, great job, Willie, uh, if you're listening or ever seen Willie this. and Pedro, we love you, man. Yeah. All right, so that's the Herrera Esteli. Like I said, there's four different kinds, um, each with a little bit different blend and, and spin on it. What's next? The Luraton. The Luraton. Now, interesting or funny thing on the Luraton, when I did some research on this and was looking it up, trying to figure out some different things on it, uh, in my search, it came up natural. I was like, natural? What the hell? Luraton is natural, spelled backwards. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, but what's interesting about these, the Luraton, is that they use a lot of different or, or exotic tobaccos. Tobacco from Syria, from Turkey, um, from Haiti. Oh, they still have some Nicaragua in there. Yeah. But... It has a lot of uh, filler and binder from some exotic locales, right? Uh, so I'm assuming that's, that's some of the symbolism behind the Luraton being natural backwards. Yep. Um, and it has some of those uh, unique exotic. So some of the names on this one were kind of interesting. The big, the big juicy. The big juicy, the juicy Lucy, the root. The Dirty Torpedo. The Dirty Torpedo, you got now that sounds like something you get from a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> they've got the dirt. They've got the Medusa. Uh, you know, is that like uh, two or three cigars that, rolled together that's or like something? Three, that's like three hookers. Three hookers. <laughs> um, so those, those were kind of interesting. Um, and they all, again, have, with this exotic tobacco, have some unique uh, flavors and blends uh, to those. And I would... Just to be able to try something that was Syrian or so, Turkey so, tobacco. So, so needless to say, we've got a bucket list of places we want to go. We need to hit Nicaragua and we need to hit their plant. Yeah, it's one that and I... That's probably, you know, that's probably the only way. Or hit their office in Miami. And that well, may be the only way we can get some of these... And, and, uh, and a lot of crux stuff is done down in Esteli. So yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of... Reasons to go to Nicaragua. Reason to go to Nicaragua. Yeah. Right now is maybe not the best time, but... Well, are you, are you thinking of the Dominican Republic? Well, anywhere right now is not a good time. Oh, either. well. You know me and the coronavirus. We're uh, best buds. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Especially after this weekend. I was out on the lake and sharing drinks with, with a friend of mine. And so if I haven't gotten it by now, uh, I'm not going to get it. He's cootie-fied, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not afraid of no... 
coronavirus, but if there's ever a Scotch virus, I'm screwed. <laughs> now, one of the interesting things about the uh, 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 natural backwards yeah. is the egg. And that the is size, the funky shape. The size says egg. So, I mean... Uh, so, I, I found a picture of it. And you have the, the, the light egg and the dark egg. Okay. Um, and so... Imagine it starting once out. Once boiled, once, once yeah, scrambled. Once yeah. hard boiled. So it starts out just like a regular cigar, and then it really looks like you have maybe not an ostrich egg, but it's bigger than a chicken egg. Uh, so like maybe a little small crocodile egg that's right in the center, and then it comes back down. I would Crazy. be interesting in how in the hell that smokes and how well that ash holds. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. We got to track down an egg. We got to track down an egg. If you know of where we can get an egg, email us, post something in our uh, uh, on our on our channel. Let us know where we can get an egg. We will order it and we will smoke it on the show. Yeah, during one of our other uh, company spotlights, we'll have to do that. But well, that's, when we, or when we come back to when we come back to and maybe we do just one specific brand within Drew Estates later down the road. You know what? And and that's because uh, they. We're well, not really doing it justice trying to get... There's so true. much there. Uh, you know what? And and I'm going to say this now. That'd be 17, Everybody knocking on wood. 17 uh, episodes alone. Well, here's the deal. Uh, this is the first commercial cigar company, mass production company that we've hit. The last two were really boutique. Right. And they didn't have near the, uh, the, the lines and that type of thing. And, and when we start hitting those companies, this, like this is the oldest too. Yep. Once we once we hit uh, uh, these guys in uh, Fluente and uh, some of the other larger ones, right? What we may do is we'll we'll split those up into like two or three uh, shows and do them as parters. That way we can focus on parts of their line on each one and do them a little more justice. We probably could have done this in three episodes. Well, I mean, we don't have to do... And I think what's good now is, I think we do still, even the big ones, we do a general overview. That allows us to gather our information. And then we come back, and we can break it up in segments, because then we know how we would want to break it up and gives us an idea that's after a great we've done idea. our, our that's initial a, that, research. We'll, 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 well hit it like we'll we're do. doing here, and then as we get lulls in the... Uh, in the uh, shows will say let's go back and do you know a segment on drew let's do a, a yeah. segment on fluente and you know yeah that i think that'll work i think that'll work all right so, yeah. what, so what, what else did you have anything else on uh, the uh, dark angel oh my god dark angels yeah okay all right so after the laura is Tons, the deadwood the dead i know you're interested in the deadwood well the deadwood because again it is well i brought some stuff from deadwood Where'd you find it? At our shop. This. Oh, that's the. Uh, this is the Sweet Jane. Okay. So, this is uh, love is for suckers and cigars are for lovers. Uh, that's the Fat Bottom Betty uh, slogan on their box, and I'll show you. So now I actually have a box, so I can show you. These are the. What did they call these? They call they call these the yummy bitches. Um, so, they've got a couple of these. They've got the Sweet Jane, the Fat Bottom Betty. And they've got a real sugar... Uh, Crazy Alice. Uh, what is that sugar skull look to the uh, right. all the designs? Now, this is actually made in... Distretto would love those, those logos. Yeah, these are made down in uh, Esteli, but... Uh, are they Mexican or uh, San Andreas? Where, where is the... the where did they where did this originate from that i don't know you don't remember south dakota south dakota yeah um now is this is this a line that they picked up this is a line that they uh bought up bought up uh from another another company added it to their it kind of fits in there infused because uh, these are a little bit uh sweeter these also have a, a sweet tip on them. Um, and this is one that I think that my friend Amanda would like, one of the Sweet Janes or maybe the Crazy Alice. Um, so I haven't smoked one of these, but I do know, since I do work in the shop uh, on Saturday mornings, 
that I do have people coming in looking for Sweet Janes and the Crazy Alice uh, cigars a lot. Um, in fact, Nathan, when I was in there picking a couple of these out, made the comment, I can't believe those sell. We have such a hard time keeping those in. So again, really? while some of these... Well, at least, they, at least they have a more traditional look right. uh, to them to, as a cigar compared to the acids. I know they also look like cigars, but they're just kind of, they're, they're small, they're... It's a small, quick smoke, and you know, I, I, you know, there's some people that that's their wheelhouse and that's their yeah. palate. So you know, more power to them. I'd I, rather just have it for other not, people. Yeah, maybe not my uh, my cup of tea, particularly that I would smoke a lot of, maybe every now and then to reset my palate or to shock the system. Blow your brains out? No, not not blow my brains out. <laughs> but anyway, so so the Deadwood series, those are is a very popular series and kind of has a cult following um, among them. So that's. Now, let's take take half a step back. Okay. And because you brought it up, and we've all we've talked about the symbolism of a lot of the blend, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, brands and the logos and that type of like, mm -hmm. thing like that. I can tell that they have done a lot of research and uh, on the designs of their logos and oh definitely uh, the uh, the symbolism. Uh, uh, it's definitely there. Uh, but one thing that I am noticing, especially when you get down to the stuff like the dead wood, uh, is, and I'm going to, and I'm going to jump into a history lesson here right. and we're going to hit this again when we do principle. But during the turn of the 19th century, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, about 80% of the population were smoking cigars. And about 70% of those people could not read. Right. And so when they were designing box labels, they really went into going for images that were striking and memorable so that those people, once they tried those cigars, could go back to the cigar shops and point to what they wanted based on the, the, the box art. And so the box art was crucial. And I'm noticing the same thing especially with the Deadwood stuff. You don't have to know what the girl's names are. You just look at the picture and know, I want that one. Right. And that's why they designed the labels, uh, the, the logos, or the uh, box art that way. And again, you know, we talked about symbolism and colors and taglines. There are very specific reasons that they pick out those things. And a lot of it's, you know, subliminal messaging or once someone mentions it to you, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense, right? And you don't realize it, but you're subconsciously picking up on that and identifying it. But it's on a very subliminal level, I guess. Exactly. Okay, next right. is the uh, Tabak Especial. Yes, those are coffee-infused cigars. And they come in uh, a, a dark, a, a negra, and a dulce. They don't come in a grande and a... No, they don't come in a grande or How about a, a frappuccino? Or a frappuccino. But I, those are kind of curious to me. I've never had one. We have them in the shop. But that's also another one that I think that since it's coffee infused and Amanda likes coffee and she likes to smoke cigars with her coffee. Now, my, here's my only question about that. Since I don't smoke infused cigars, would a coffee infused cigar pair well with a cup of coffee? Well, we'll have to experiment and try that. So you're going to make me smoke one. Okay. No. I won't <laughs> make you do anything. <laughs> At least not on this show. Um, but we may, we may Saturday, one day Saturday at the shop sit down with a cup of Distretto coffee. Because we want to do good coffee if we're going to do and that. And I, I told her I was going to try and get her a couple of packages of that. Because she was wanting to branch out into some really good coffee. And I said, I know some good coffee you that you know might like. I know some good I know, people. I know some people. I know some people. I know some people. My people will talk to your people. Um, so we'll sit down one day and, and you I and I will we'll smoke one and have a cup of distretto coffee and see how it pairs. And I think this one, uh, the other only other interesting fact I had on these coffee-infused ones was I think it was five years in the making, this whole process of finding the right coffee blend and how to infuse it and get the tobacco right um, to have, you know, not to be too overpowering or, or too light and find that right, that right blend mix. So 
Okay, here's another so one you were interested in, the Pappy Van Winkle. Ah, the Pappy Van Winkle tradition, right? Yep. So, this is one of the ones that started, ah, uh, see, I, I mixed some stuff up. So, uh, this is the one that when Willie Herrera came to Drew Estate and started doing some of the blending, this is the one that is uh, barrel fermented. So when okay. I mentioned earlier the Kentucky Fired, right? This Pappy Van Winkle is Kentucky Fired, okay, or cured, um, but this is the one that's barrel fermented, okay. Not the not the uh, not the Kentucky cured ones, okay. Uh, fire cured. This is the one that uh, they do it up in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. They bring it down to uh, Saint is it Saint James Parish in Louisiana? Yep. In charred oak barrels. Um, 500 pounds in a 53 gallon barrel, seal it for a year, rotate it three times throughout the year. The hardwood that they burn in the barn to fire cure it is uh, hardwood. So it's oak and hickory and maple to give that nice, good woody. I would think an oak and a maple and a hickory would be a good flavor to have oh, yeah, on a absolutely. cigar or in a tobacco. But, um, and then from there, after it is done its barrel fermentation in Louisiana, it is then transported down to Esteli where they do all the rolling. And this, uh, an interesting fact on this was that I think it was 2016 at one of the events that uh, Jonathan Drew gave a box of these cigars at some event to the owner of Pappy Van Winkle and uh, gave it to him and then they sm they liked it and then that's when they kind of started this uh, collaboration and partnership between them and Pappy Van Winkle, for those of you who are bourbon drinkers. Uh, so they, they actually have uh, two different um, Pappy Van Winkle lines and you can only buy them on the Pappy Van Winkle site or in some of their Pappy Van Winkle stores. So they're kind of kind of exclusive. So you need to do a Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, you need to run. do a Kentucky bourbon run. So yeah, so you've got the traditional one and then the barrel fermented cigars. They're barrel fermented cigars, which is like the uh, family reserve. So yeah, those are those are extremely uh, hard to find and rare, but those that's one I'm interested in in smoking and tasting that smokiness uh, and that barrel Now, for those of you who are counting, we're still not done yet. We still have one, two, three, four, five more yeah. to go through. And we've gone pretty quick. And we, yeah, we did, we, did we have any questions or anything come up? No. You, come on, now check, make sure, make sure someone didn't say something. No, but we've had a couple of people pop in and say nothing. Come on, at least say, <laughs> you guys suck. Ron's an ugly mother. <laughs> All right. So what's next on our list? Well, you know, you got the list. It's Isles of... De Del Sol. Isles del Sol. Isles del Sol. Wrapped in sun-kissed Sumatra. Yes. It's got a wrapper. Uh, a Trepa Mazculo blend of Nicaraguan leaf infused with a Cuban-style... Mojo of exotic Sumatra. So I, it's a it, and this is also a coffee infused coffee infused cigar. I suck at this man. with a sweetened tip. So again, I'm curious how they like that sweetened tip thing. I don't understand that. It, well, it, you know it. I, I it want maple into, syrup. I'll go have a pancake. Well, but that bacon maple syrup one sounded pretty good. That Kentucky Fire Cure. I don't know, man. Um. But so that one, uh, that one I'm kind of interested in. Again, that's not one that we carry in the shop. You know, we carry a ton of their cigars in the shop, but we probably only carry about 50% of their brands. I bet we don't even carry that. I bet, right. they, I bet it's less than a third. But, um, so yeah, so that's uh, Sun Grown and Maduro, uh, the two different main uh, ones they have in the... I'm going to let you butcher this next one. Isla del Sol. Oh, well, that's the one we already talked about. That's the La... Uh, La Vieja, uh, La, La Vieja Habana. La Vieja Habana, the old, the old Habana. 
Okay. So okay. it's just down their list. But that was the first one they introduced. What I did find interesting, and I was curious about, are the on, on the label of that one. It's got two topless ladies. If you look really close, either that or it's really cold when they uh, posed for that. Um, but that was the original cigar that they came up with. Um, and uh, but yeah, that is an interesting logo. But I'm curious, where are those? Are those smoke goddesses, or you know, what kind of symbolism does that have of those two ladies kind of lounging back? I don't see them holding cigars, but they are kind of out like ah, uh, the old Habana, or your short, the, you know, the old uh, Habana. So anyway, so that was that was uh, an interesting on it. But we've already talked about that one. Yep. So the Ambrosia. The Ambrosia. And if that's not a infused, I'll. It is super infused with all different kinds of spices. Um, I think some of the spices that I thought were pretty interesting on there um, was, uh, well, some of the things that they call them, like there's a mother earth, there's the nectar. They, they talk about obey the spice God uh, is one of their uh, taglines for these. But they have a clove uh, spice in one of the cigars. The and, Ticas. Yeah, and just some of the spices. Again, when we go back to what was the uh, the the Laterna la, la or the natural ones yeah. with the exotic tobacco, this is now exotic spices that they put in with these cigars and fuse them somehow. They've got a Sweet, they've got a Maduro, they've got a Shade, and they've got a Sun Grown. Um, on their different uh, blends there uh, under the Ambrosia. And it's a relatively new one that's only come out in the past couple of years. Yep. I think maybe past two years, 18 or 19, 2018 or 19. Um, but kind of going to that, uh, you know, particular, I think that's gonna go to a particular palette. You're either probably gonna love it or hate it. Right. With those spices. Again. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I got a question. Yeah. Let's see what... Watching and working out, I'm loving it. Totally thinking I need a sampler of this Drew Estates. And thanks for the shout out. And who was that from? Captain Sparkles. Oh, so that's Amanda. Oh, hi, Amanda. So that means Nice that... to not meet you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that means when she says a sampler, so I'll get some Sweet Janes and Between some Between him and I, we'll put you something together and... Some of the Javas and... Some uh, of the Javas and some of the Sweet Janes and... Sweet Janes, the Ambrosia. Uh, what was the other ones? Man, if I could get a, some... I'll send her some of the acids. We'll see what she thinks about the acids. Um... I would love to get my hands on the Kentucky Fire Cured. I think she'd like those, but I'm gonna smoke that first. Sorry. Um, let's see. Um, all right, so there are perks to being on the show and <laughs> and, and actually commenting. Uh, we are liable to send you something. Yeah, it may not be much, but hey, we're not, we're out here having fun. That's all that matters. All right, so. All what? right, we're down to the last two. The factory smokes. Uh, you know what? I really don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time on those. Fi the, the, their, their boast is a uh, value price line of cigars, perfect right. for sharing what, with friends. And what, and what it it's basically like cheap, is, it's well, it's, like cheap scotch. these are the ones that, you know what, you're doing work in the garage, you're mowing the yard, just those activities. You don't really need to concentrate on, on the flavor you're getting. This is their way of mass producing some cigars and trying to do bundle packs uh or you've got a bunch of friends over who don't appreciate cigars and you're not going to give them you're not going to give them your 30 dollar your 35 dollar uh, uh Pitoro Pitoro XO. XO. exactly yeah. <laughs> so you pull out the factory smokes and say here you go guys yeah um and so those are just you know kind of nothing special just here you go value and then the subculture and then the which subculture is, which is what now and 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 now that we hit this one the whole the whole beginning with the whole acid it's I kind think, of a subculture well i was about to say i think they were trying to appeal to the subculture and in, in cigars well and you know if you look in you look at uh jonathan drew you know he you know even proclaims himself as kind of you know listening to hard rock and a little bit into some of that and you know the graffiti artists that they got involved in the acid so there is a little bit of that subculture overtones <laughs> 
And uh, Amanda, you are you are soon to be my new best friend. She says uh, there are also perks to having friends in Kentucky. <laughs> That's right. She says those uh, Pappy Van Winkles are on her radar. So, ah, oh, uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, we need to do some swapping there, Amanda. <laughs> we'll send you some good stuff. You send us some good stuff. Everybody makes it ma makes it out happy. You know, when I was doing the research, I did the research after I got back from visiting her, and I realized that Hopkinsville, where they do some of these cigars. Just down the street? Well, not just down the street, but it's an hour and a half, two hour drive that, damn, you could have made. Yeah. I could have made while I was there. Um, on well, one of you our know, days. the next time you head down there, right. the two of you can head down there and make a trip out of it. And then we'll smoke some Sam cigars Mario, exactly. and make fun of you by not having any. So That's yeah. right. I expect a live stream. <laughs> so the subculture, these are extra special limited editions from the acid or the tobacco or the natural or the uh, Luraton lines. Yep. Right? That are found only in select cigar lounges. And these are typically some of their uh, Drew Estate ambassador lounges uh, around the country. Which industrial will never be? Probably never be an ambassador. Because they're an Atabe ambassador. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine with me. Exactly. Um, there's plenty of other cigar lounges. If I really wanted to go find some of these, I could probably find some. And I got plenty of friends in other states. And DFW that, is a large area. If they yeah. don't have one in the DFW area... I'd be surprised. It, it would shock me, really. So, some of these, for the acid, there is the Wild Hair and the Windy City. That's just one. I mean, there's a whole bunch. But each lounge only carries... A certain one, right? Uh, and then under the tabac, these are the coffee-infused ones. They have the Cafe Con Leche, and then they have the Red Eye. And then under the Natural or the Loratons, they have... Did I write that down right? The Dip Stick? Oh, no, the Pimp Stick. The Pimp Stick. The Pimp Stick. Now, I, I, I'm going to have to try a Pimp Stick. The Pimp Stick, I'm like, all right, because... What, because... What, what, what exotic tobacco is in the pimp stick that makes it the pimp stick. Right, exactly. That's, That's what I would love to find out. And then they have another one a called... A pimp named Slickback. <laughs> and then they have another one called Irish Hops. Well, you know how the Irish love to drink. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious what makes it an Irish Hops or an Irishy... I uh, think I think you and I need to come up with a wish list. <laughs> well, I, I'll say, out of Drew Estates, there are several that I haven't tried that I'm, I'm now intrigued and... You know, we talked about this. There's so many things in their line. It was a little off-putting considering the other cigar companies we covered were very narrow in their focus. Yep. And super high quality in what they did. Now, I'm not saying Drew Estate doesn't do quality cigars. Well, the, the but I would Herrera and Stille is, well, yeah. is but quality. Yeah. But I would say in some of their brands, they probably don't have as tight of quality control or... Uh, give uh, as as some of the other brands that we covered but it did make me say all right yeah i haven't smoked these so for me to really say it's a good or not good or it's not in my wheelhouse i've got to challenge my palate and that's part of you know part of the cigar culture you got to challenge your palate and figure out what you like and your palate does change over time so yep. okay now for the bad news ah that is the last one what about their history have we not Let's covered? Let's cover the rest of the history that we have not covered. All right. In 2014, Swisher International bought up Drew Estates and made it a subsidiary of Switzer. Swisher, Swisher International. So, And you know Swisher Cigars, and they're pretty much garbage. Uh, uh oh, we've got another big long. Oh, that's the second one that yeah. Captain Scott uh, has put out there. Uh, in 2000. 17, uh, Jonathan was brought back as the president for the Drew Estate section of uh, Swisher International. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they had, they but had. also around that time, they opened up a hunt. Now, remember, we mentioned earlier they had a 96,000 square foot facility, which was the largest in Nicaragua, what was it, fifth in the world. Mm hmm. They opened up a 174,000 square foot factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. That is a lot of floor space. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of tobacco flowing through there. 
and there's there they've got to be selling that stuff off to and making their own stuff but well, i'm sure they're selling off that stuff to other companies and as so well. while it's not a brand i do want to bring up the la Clision. okay because this is a collaboration between drew estates and crown heads crown head yep so uh Besides the brands, Drew Estate does a lot of collaborations or will roll cigars for people or use some of their and who stuff. Else are they, and, and who else are they helping out? I know they help out, uh, what's his name? Rocky Patel. Uh, Rocky Patel. They also, so they, they, they do a lot of collaborations and work with a lot of other cigar companies because they do have this gorgeous, huge facility. facility. Uh, you know, we already mentioned they they work with uh, Hoya de Nicaragua, uh, so and plus they have Willie on staff. Well, I they mean, got Willie. When you've got a world class blender. blender like Willie Herrera, you're going to attract and, other and, companies. World class blender like Pedro. Yeah, I mean the, yeah. the two of those guys together. You know, you got can two, make up for a lot of shortfalls you may have in your you, in your yeah. You, you've got two all stars like that. You're going to attract a lot of attention. A lot of people are going to want to work with you and just. Be associated with your brand name exactly um so a little bit of back history on on this so they were they were bought by swish international 2016 well 14 14 yeah 14 so around this time it didn't really talk i read an article that talked a little bit about this there was a lot of pressure from the fda yeah on machine made flavored cigars Right, so the Swishers, which was really in Swishers' wheelhouse. Right. So part of this, because the article was like, "Oh, is this the end of Drew Estate?" You know, and everything when they did this. But so they started pushing out a lot of stuff. Yeah. To get in before the regulation set in, so that they could be grandfathered in. So part of this was really a good business move for both Swisher and Drew Estate. Drew Estate had grown so big that Jonathan Drew and you know his his partners didn't have the capital to continue growing their brand and expanding. Swisher needed some protection from potential shutting yep. down a flavor and to diversify into handmade premium cigars. So Drew Estate needed capital, they didn't have it. Swisher needed some hand rolled premium cigars, they didn't have it. It was a, a perfect business marriage. Uh, but the, once they did that, um, you know, we said 2016 brought back, um, 2017, 16, 17, they brought back, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Drew. Well, those two, two and a half years, once they went under Swisher, Drew Estate kind of lost their way and lost their focus and started drifting away from their core values. And that's the reason they brought their core value of throw it against the wall, see what sticks, <laughs> fake it till you make it. Well, and so they were even in more chaos than what that would lead you to believe, right? Uh, and you know so, that was one thing I did read on one of the articles that you know under uh, uh, Jonathan and uh, Marvin, uh, their entire process was chaotic. I mean, yeah. the, it was kind of uh, uh, it, uh, it really was fake it till you make it slash throw what you can up against the wall, trying to come up with something that would that would sell and would help them expand their business. And, you know, and I can understand that. I mean, you know, uh, I, I've, I've teased them a little bit and kind of uh, talked down to them a little bit. But you know what? They've been in business since 1998. Uh, they may have been picked up by uh, Swisher. 96, 96, 96. Uh, right, 98, though, they... Uh, is when they really started on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when they went on their own. Uh, so, uh, what is that? Twenty-two years. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Well, it, and and the thing is, is um, it's hard to keep a business open twenty-two years. Yeah, and you know, yes, trying to create a a, a niche in the in the industry and something unique. Uh, is not an easy process. And he talks about, openly talks about his failures and some of the brands he tried to start that just fell flat. Well, you know, and... And he, and he embraced those failures. He said, because if if I don't... He keeps a list 
on his cell phone that's his the list it's the failure list of brands that he tried to start or lines he tried to start that failed yep um, if you don't embrace your failures and learn from your failures um, he wants to make that connection from his from his failures to the successes and if you if you try to forget or don't pay attention to your failures you start to get big britches and think you're you know better than you really are and yep. so he likes to remind himself quite often of the failures that he's had and it, it's it's a hard job it's well, I couldn't do it well, you know and 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 I'm not going to speak bad about either one of these two companies, but Crux and uh, Patoro are relatively new compared to these guys. Oh, yeah. And in any industry, if you're not uh, innovating and uh, changing and adapting to new ideas, new, new trends, and that type of thing, uh, you'll get stagnant and die. Or and, your competition will come up with something your, new or, and better. Or your, or your competition will eat you alive. Uh, and so, you know, in another 10 years, 10 years from now, we may be looking at Crux and uh, Patoro and going, do you remember the black label? Mm -hmm. Or do you remember the orange label? Or do you remember the, uh, the, yeah. the bull and the bear? You know, I mean, right. uh, they may have to evolve those. And, and one thing that those two companies have that Drew did not have was money and time. Yep. Uh, part of the reason that I'm sure Drew Estates does not age their tobacco like Patoro and Drew Estates does four to 12 years like, is they Patoro can't... Patoro and Crux. What did I say? You said Patoro and Drew Estates. I'm does. sorry. Patoro, Patoro and Crux. And Crux. How they age it as long it, as they is, do. Is they, is they can afford to sit on that tobacco that long and uh, until they produce the product. And evidently, Drew Estates can't afford to do that. They've got a 174,000 square foot facility they got to maintain. Right. So if they're not pushing out stuff on a continual basis, uh, uh, they're going to get ate up. Uh, just from the cost. Right. Uh, but you know what? Uh, now that they have Willie and Pedro and they have the backing of Swisher, it, it, we, it takes some of that pressure off Drew. I was reading a little bit about our Jonathan and Drew. Uh, you know. But it may, it, they may be able to sit on some of that tobacco for an extended period of time. And in the next two to four years, we'll start seeing- A little bit more aged. A little bit more aged and more uh, uh, complex and more dynamic uh, lines around the stuff that you and I are used to. Yeah, so that, there's there's a challenge out to you, uh, Jonathan Drew and, and Willie and Pedro. See if you can come up with some good uh, tobacco that you're willing to sit around for four plus years. Four plus years maybe even six years and see if uh what you can come up with that because uh personally i think w if willie had anywhere from four to ten year old tobacco sitting around oh i'd love to have that i don't care what uh, blend it I is i mean <laughs> he would make something so phenomenal it would throw, well and again it would it, throw it would throw acid into a tizzy the 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 herrera esteli line is is my my favorite in there and the collaboration they did with Crown Heads, this La Colision is, is an excellent cigar, But, you know, uh, Crown Heads sitting on tobacco, too. Yeah. You know, they're aging their stuff. Yeah. Uh, you've got, a, you've got a, a box press over there. You, you haven't yes. shown. Go ahead and show that. What is that? All right. So, this is the Acid 20-Year Anniversary Edition. Um, you can see it's got the classic motorcycle guy on there. It says 20-Year uh, Acid on it. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but it was one of the ones of the acids that I decided I would. What'd I you pay for that one? Rough guess. Uh, nine bucks. Nine bucks? I'll have to pick one up. Nine, ten dollars, yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's, we got through that in an hour and a half, but there was a lot to cover. And there's still so much that we didn't even touch Yeah, on. we didn't really get deep into all the brands. We just kind of blew through it really quick. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Any, any Amanda, last questions? I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> Thank you for showing up. And when we see Jonathan uh, uh, or John online again, we're going to rest the shit out of him. <laughs> uh, 
our producer didn't show up this time, so. Well, I sent him a text too, but you know, I don't. He may be on and just hadn't said anything. He let I'm, he let Amanda do all the commenting this time. He, he let her do all the commenting. Uh, I will eventually figure out how this Twitch thing works and be able to see who's actually on and who's not. And, and we're gonna do start something calling, in, the calling next, in the next week or two where we're gonna do it on multiple platforms. So you don't have we to be are on tri- be doing, Twitch. So. Uh, we're we're we are evolving. Uh, uh, next week, if things go well, you're going to see a little different uh, uh, setup here. Uh, my wife has already bought us uh, matching chairs so that yeah. I'm, so that I'm not so short sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll start be uh, start trying to uh, broadcast on uh, multiple channels, uh, Facebook at least, uh, and uh, Twitch. Uh, I'm not too too wild about broadcasting uh, shows on. Uh, Instagram for the simple fact that they require everything to be done in portrait and uh, that is yeah. a horrible format uh, and if you uh, don't think portrait is a horrible format <laughs> do a Google or not a, a YouTube search for vertical video glove and boots and watch that video <laughs> and uh, you will understand why vertical video is horrible all right, before we go, she had a couple more comments. What did she, she have to says, say? She says, I did, and thank you, and y'all did a great job. I'm feeling confident in my cigar beginnings. <laughs> uh, check out TalesFromTheLounge.com. I have a Cigar 101 article on there with pictures and some video. Uh, kind of give you a rundown on the basics, which you may already know. Uh, if not, uh, it'll be something you can uh, pick up and learn. And just remember, everybody, if you're into cigars or you want to get into cigars, don't think that you have to be an old tycoon or a multimillionaire <laughs> to enjoy cigars. Because Chris and I are neither one of those guys, but we do enjoy the relaxation and the cigar culture that comes along with cigars and cigar lounges. And we have really uh, grown a great friendship and a great uh, association with a lot of great people. And uh, just remember, you can do it without going broke. Everything in moderation and have a good time. Amanda, that sweet Jane, I'll, I'll put in a box with some more and send your way this week. Oh, speaking of relaxation, this past weekend, Amanda rented a boat. We went on the lake, smoking cigars out on the lake, laid out on the boat, listening to music. Saturday this past weekend was probably one of the most perfect days I had in a long time. Next to Cuba? Next to Cuba. And there, it matched one of my days in Cuba that was just that total relaxation, no worries, no carries. I was with good people, and I was just able to just take in the moment and... Enjoy a good cigar. Enjoy a good cigar, and uh, yeah. It okay. was a great. Well, thanks everybody for joining. I hope you will follow us and when you find these on YouTube or Facebook, uh, be sure to subscribe and like and notify and all that other happy stuff. And if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments and we'll be happy to respond uh, as quickly as we can. And have a great week. Mm. Oh, Who are we doing next week? What who company? Who's the company spotlight? Well, we got a little confused on uh, this week. We thought we were doing Southern Draw. But we said Drew Estates, but then we associated with Robert Holt, and those yeah. are two different things. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and do Southern Draw. You want to do Southern Draw? Let's do Southern Draw. And then two weeks from now, you want to do Tatawahe? Sure. Let's do Tatawahe. So now we kind of know we can start doing a little bit of pre-work for two weeks out. I, th- I think that's good. Uh, do you think we need to do more than two weeks, though? No. I think we No. I think two weeks will be fine. So next week, we're going to be doing Southern Draw. Week after that, we're going to do Tetuahe with Pete. Pete Johnson. Oh, Pete's a great guy. Yep. All right. That's it. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more of our stuff, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified, hit that bell. You know what to do. If you want to see more Saturday at the Shop and Tales from the Lounge stuff, hit the playlist. Check out our channel. And let us know what you think. Love your feedback. Have a great day.